2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. He says, study, number one, right? So study, and studying requires effort, right? To put forth that effort. Study to do what? Study to show ourselves approved. Approved to who? To God. So our studying, the primary reason, at least this is my opinion, the primary reason for one's studying should not to be so I can impress my brother, so I can impress my sister. So when I get into a conversation with others, they'll know that, boy, he really knows the word. No, that shouldn't be the primary goal. That shouldn't be the primary purpose. The primary purpose for studying the word of God should be so I can show myself approved unto the one who saved me. I want to show myself approved unto God. Unto God what? A workman, a co-labor with Jesus Christ, right? One who is not ashamed and one who rightly divides the word of truth. So notice, study for what reason, what purpose? To show ourselves approved unto God what a workman right a servant who is in service for god a workman a workman that doesn't need to be ashamed to be called a christian doesn't need to be ashamed to be a worker for god and not only that but now rightly dividing the word of truth right why rightly dividing the word of truth because when we rightly divide the word of truth we gain spiritual confidence we gain spiritual confidence through the Holy Spirit, or we gain faith. So the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So yes, we read the word of God. We also study the word of God. And as a result of studying the word of God, we're studying it to uh, to that we may please our God, that we may be workmen for him, and we rightly divide the word of truth. Rightly divide the word of truth. So who helps us do that? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is one of his attributes, his characteristics, names, is the spirit of truth. He's also called the spirit of Christ, right? So if the Holy Spirit is referred to as the spirit of Christ, and we know, as the brother Sam said, um, Jesus Christ is the truth, and Jesus uh, and the word Jesus is the word of God, and the word of God is true. So if he is the spirit of Christ, then he's also the spirit of truth because Jesus is the truth. So hence, we have scripture references relating to him as the spirit of truth. So let's go to John, John chapter 14, John chapter 14, verse 17. John chapter 14, verse 17. And I'll just read the scriptures all to you for the sake of time. Um, John chapter 14, verse 17. These are the words of Jesus. He says, now he's talking about the comforter, right? That he's going to pray the Father. He's going to send us another comforter. And then the comforter referring to the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead, as it is called, the executive of the Godhead, part of the Trinity. Jesus refers to him in verse 17, John 14, 17. Jesus says, even the spirit of truth, or we can interchange that word, even the spirit of Christ, or even the spirit of the word of God. It's all the same. So he says, even the spirit of truth. So now, just stopping right there, go to chapter 15. Chapter 15, verse 26, just Jesus still telling his disciples as well as us about the Holy Spirit, preparing his disciples for the Holy Spirit and giving us reference points in the Bible. We look back at the Bible. It's our reference guide in, about the Holy Spirit. 
15, 26, he says, but when the comforter, so notice, he said the comforter made reference to him as a comforter in chapter 14. And now he's also making reference to him as the comforter in chapter 15. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father. So now we see the Trinity or the triune government all inclusive in this one scripture as with many scriptures. He says, I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth. So he will comfort us as believers, but he'll also reveal to us the truth, the truth, right? So even the spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall do what? He shall testify of me. So the Holy Spirit, Jesus said he, he's the spirit of truth. Why? Because he's going to testify of the word. He's going to testify of me. He's going to bring to your remembrance and my remembrance what Jesus said, what Jesus did. And we know that to be true as we go back to John chapter 14 verse 26 where jesus says but the comforter which is the holy spirit in king james the holy ghost he says he shall teach you all things and he shall bring he shall teach you and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you so he's going to testify of me and because i am the way the truth and the life He's going to testify of the truth. So why am I sharing this? I'm sharing this because 1 John chapter 4 tells us that there's a spirit of error, which is antichrist spirit, and there's a spirit of truth. So the question for you and I as believers in this world that we live in, where there's error all around us, how do we know the truth? Well, we need the Holy Spirit as we study the Word of God, as we live the Word of God, as we're made aware and we're exposed to the Word of God, we need the Holy Spirit to give us clarity of the Word of God and to how to apply it to our lives. All right? So he says, the Comforter, verse, uh, chapter 15, verse 26, the Comforter, again, confirming um, that he's referring to the Holy Spirit. He said, he's the Spirit of truth and he will testify of me. All right, so now let's go to chapter 16, verse 13. Chapter 16, verse 13. And there is a reason, and I'll, I'll share a few scriptures with you. Um, he says, by two or three witnesses, let every word be established. I believe it's Matthew chapter 18. So we have scriptural support. Scriptures support each other. So I don't need to take one scripture and build a doctrine off of my opinion, this theologian's opinion, that theologian, that professor. No. The answers for the scriptures, the answers for the word of God are contained in the word of God. By two or three witnesses, he said, let every word be established. So if we're trying to make a point or explain something to someone from one scripture, you can rest assured there's multiple scriptures, at least two or three, and probably more, that can support that biblical point you're making with others because the word of God is true, All right? So chapter 16, verse 13, notice what he said here. He says, how be it when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you. We talked about that a couple weeks ago the spirit of guidance, right? He guides us. He will guide you into what? Into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So he's only going to reveal to us the truth. He's only going to reveal to us Jesus. He's only going to reveal to us the word of God. And as he reveals it to us, as I said before, He's going to reveal it to us by two or three or more witnesses. Because we know, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the Bible tells us, number one, that God does everything decently in order. Number two, 
that God is not the author of confusion. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He's going to lead us into truth, right? He's going to help us to speak the truth in love. Ephesians chapter 4. He's going to help us speak the truth, but saturated in love. Because you can use the word of God to cut people down and hurt people. But we know it's motivated. We know it's inspired by the Holy Spirit when it's spoken in love. Because he said here in John 16, 13, he's going to guide you. He's going to lead you. So speaking the truth in love, it takes the Holy Spirit leading us. It takes the Holy Spirit guiding us. It takes the Holy Spirit giving us that wisdom. We have the knowledge, but how do I apply that knowledge? How do I speak that knowledge in a wise way with that particular person or this particular body of individuals? The Holy Spirit is the one who helps us. All right. So he said, even the spirit of truth. So we have John chapter 14, verse 17, John chapter 15, um, verse 26, John chapter 16, verse 13, letting us know that we have the truth, but, or not but, in addition to having the truth, the word of God, which is Jesus, we need the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, to teach us, to remind us of the truth. So with that being said, let's kind of bring this together with what Jesus said in John chapter 8. Jesus said in John chapter 8, know the truth and the truth will do what? It will set you free. It will make you free. It will keep you free. So let's look at that. The truth will make you free. John chapter 8, verse 32. It will set you free. So that's continual. How can we have assurance that it's continual? It's continual because it's the Holy Spirit who's constantly bringing that truth to us. Again, going back to John 14, 26. He shall teach you right? The Holy Spirit, who's the spirit of truth. He will teach you, so ongoing teaching. He will bring to your remembrance, ongoing, bring it to our remembrance. Then jump to John 16, 13. He will guide you, right? So we have all these supporting scriptures, and not just the scriptures, but the words that are contained in these scriptures. He will teach you. He will bring to your remembrance. He will guide you. For he will testify of me, so he won't lead us astray. So now, as we bring those, those particular scriptures, and there's others, as we bring them into play, we can wrap that package up. We can, we can put the bow tie, if you please, on that package of scriptures with John chapter 8, verse 32, where Jesus says, Ye shall, not maybe, not possibly, how can he say ye shall know the truth? Because the Holy Spirit is in us. So then, going back to John chapter 14, Jesus says, I'm going to pray the Father that he will send you another comforter, even the Spirit, even the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. He will be in you. He will be with you. So with that being said, as he was giving us that introduction to the Holy Spirit, and being the spirit of truth, going back to John 8, 32 again, he says, ye shall know the truth. So shall, because the Holy Spirit will be in you and he'll be bringing it to your remembrance. He'll use it as a, comp a tool to comfort you and console you. He'll use it as a tool to guide you. He'll use it as a tool, a, a tool to lead you. He'll, he'll use it as a tool to sustain our spiritual lives. So ye shall know. Again, that word know from the Greek, it takes on an intimate form, a spiritual intimacy form. You won't just know about the truth. You won't just have a head knowledge of the Bible, but the Holy Spirit in us, operating in us and through us, he's going to bring the word of God. He's going to make the word of God alive to us so that even as like we eat food, I was eating some oatmeal cookies today. My downfall. 
when I eat those oatmeal cookies, those calories apply to my waistline. <laughs> They're applicable to my body. So just like that, the Holy Spirit in us, when he brings the word, when he feeds us the word of God, it's applicable to our spiritual sustainability. So we shall know the truth. And as a result of having the spirit in us, bring it to our remembrance, leading us, guiding us, uh, teaching us, it will make us free. Not just one time at the altar, not just only on Sunday in church, but continually every day of our lives. Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free, keep you free, make you free, set you free and keep you free because the spirit of God. So with that being said, if the spirit is in us, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, the comforter, our lead, our guide, our teacher, our reminder. So when we jump back over to 1 John chapter 4, verse 6, yes, it talks about there's these spirits in the world, they're antichrist spirits, the spirit of error. So he says, we know the spirit of truth. Why do we, why can he say that? Because the spirit is in us. The spirit is in us and he's, he's, he's functioning. He's working in us, reminding, teaching, leading, guiding. So therefore we're able to fend off in that spiritual warfare. And people talk about spiritual warfare and, and for, well, I'm not saying they don't include the spirit, but they talk about all the armor but if you look at Ephesians chapter 6, this uh, talking about the armor of God, put on the whole armor of God, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, it tells you, and your loins gird about with the truth or surround it with the truth. Well, if I'm supposed to be around surrounded with the truth and the truth is holding everything together, it's like a belt. You put on a belt, you fasten the belt, it holds everything up, holds everything together. He's saying that in the whole um, concept of spiritual warfare and the whole armor of God, it's the truth that we're surrounded with, we're girded about with the truth, and the Spirit of God is helping us to uh, keep that spiritual sustainability or that spiritual ability to exist right every day of our lives so let me draw your attention to Proverbs now I'm gonna take some questions here so in, I've been talking to you about uh, from the New Testament right primarily the gospel of Jesus according to John John and then also first John same writer I share with you um, speaking the truth in love Ephesians and there's other scriptures as well. But I want to draw your attention to, to Proverbs chapter 23. Notice what he said in the Proverbs here. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 23. Solomon writing. He said, buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom, instruction, and understanding. So he said, buy the truth or purchase, obtain, embrace the truth. And you know, we, this is a, a, a cultural saying, and then when I say culture, I'm not just referring to the African American, um, across cultures, across racial cultures. Um, the truth hurts. It hurts our flesh, right? But it's good for our soul because it produces uh, freedom. It produces liberation. It, it sets free. So Solomon wrote here in Proverbs 23, 23, he said, buy the truth, obtain the truth, embrace the truth, even though it may hurt your flesh, even though it may go against your grain of thinking, the truth. And it, again, not my opinion. He's referring to the word of God. Jesus Christ. Who is the truth? Jesus is the truth. What is the truth? The word is the truth. By that truth, by the Holy Scriptures, and in, in 
and embodying the truth and embracing the truth, lean on the Holy Spirit, who's the spirit of truth, to help you, help me, rightly divide what God has given us. God has given us the truth to set us free, yes, from spiritual sin, but also from things that we're dealing with in our lives, things in our past, things that we grew up with. Uh, the truth, God uses the truth, the Holy Spirit uses the truth to refine us and to conform us into the image of Christ. It's the truth that burns out that, that, that chaff. And you, a reference to that is Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 and verse 12. He says, but when the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, ye shall be baptized in the Holy Ghost and with fire. And he says his fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly or completely purge his floor. So the truth is fire. And that fire gets so hot sometimes it makes us uncomfortable. And, and it's making us uncomfortable because it's refining, it's purifying, it's getting all that unchrist like stuff out of our lives so that it can he can institute more Christ like in us characteristics the fruit of the spirit again Galatians chapter 5 love kindness gentleness he uses that fire he uses that fire of the truth to burn out all that chaff those unchrist like characteristics that we all have and use it to conform us into the image of Christ and what does that look like it looks like Galatians chapter 5, the fruit of the Spirit, love, etc., etc. All right? So, buy the truth and sell it not. And then he goes into wisdom, right? He says also wisdom. A scripture reference for wisdom, I don't want to get off on this too much, but it's 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. The Bible tells us Christ is made unto us wisdom. So Christ, made the truth, is made unto us wisdom. Christ is made unto us wisdom. So everything points back to Christ because he is the truth and he has dispatched and dispersed the Holy Spirit to live in us and through us to make that truth real to us every day. And as that, as the truth from the word of God is being made real to us every day, we began to be delivered from various things. We're changing, we're constantly changing for the better. So hence, as I wrap it up and I'm gonna take some questions, hence, when John was writing and John was saying in 1 John chapter four, he says, he gave that little narrative, that quick narrative. He says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Why could he say that? Because the one that's in you is true. And he's greater than the spirit of error. The spirit of truth is greater than the spirit of error because the truth is going to set you free from those ways, uh, those ways that's error, those unchristlike characteristics. So he is letting us know in verse four, John chapter four, first John chapter four, verse four, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world because it's the Holy Spirit who's the spirit of truth who's testifying of Jesus, who's the truth, and he's going to reveal to us the pure, the holy characteristics of Christ, the fruit of the Spirit, love, and all those things that we need. Hence, let me wrap it up with this scripture. John chapter 13, verse 34, 35, 35. Jesus says, by this, by love, will all men know that ye are my disciples. Who gives us that love? How do we know we gain the love of God? The Holy Spirit, Romans chapter five, verse five. The love of God, that love that we need to display or manifest to the world that's in error, the Holy Spirit sheds that love of God, that agape divine love in our hearts by the Holy Spirit.